Hey guys, so these are some pictures from Duke. Um, these two pictures right here are the chapel in Duke. Uh, this would be classrooms in Duke, and this is just a, a class building in Duke. Just thought you'd want to see some of what Duke looks like. It's a gorgeous campus. So again, we're reviewing factoring, and I am doing this from inside the Duke Library, so um, if you hear occasional noise passing by, that's what that is. Um, we all know that we begin factoring by factoring out the greatest common factor. I can factor out a 3 and an x, and I'm left with x4 minus 81. x to the fourth minus 81 is the difference of squares, a special pattern that we've been reviewing which means this would be x squared minus 9 and x squared plus 9. Um, don't forget that we're multiplying conjugates because we have no middle in here. That typically gives you an idea that we're multiplying conjugates to get rid of the middle. Um, again, I notice that this is the difference of squares. So go one more step and I have 3x x minus 3, x plus 3, and x squared plus 9 cannot be factored any further. If I wanted to solve this, so if I went ahead and add equal 0 here, I would set all of these equal to 0. So this would be 3x equals 0, so x equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3, x plus 3 equals 0, so x equals negative 3, and this one would be x squared equals negative 9. Take the square root of both sides, so x equals plus or minus 3i. So I actually have five solutions, 0, 3, negative 3, and plus or minus 3i. So if you think about end behavior, this is an odd, a positive odd, so I know it needs to end down, and so the left will fall and the right will end up, and I know it has to go through 0, 3, and negative 3. So if you think about, and then it has another little bump for these two um, imaginaries, so you can start to begin to get a picture of what this graph is going to look like. Okay, over here. This would be the difference of cubes, so I know A is 2x and B is 1, so it would be 2x minus 1, and I'd have A squared plus A times B plus B squared, and that's as far as I can factor that. Okay, uh, GCF here would again be 3 and that's going to leave me 64x cubed plus 125. So I'm factoring. 64x cubed would be 4x times 4x times 4x, so that's going to be my A. 125 is 5 times 5 times 5. That's going to be my B. So I will have the 3 out front. I will do A plus B. And a squared minus a times b plus b squared. Um, this other one is just your plain and simple factoring, where actually with the leading coefficient of 1, you should be able to guess and check. So this is x and x. I need these two numbers right here to multiply to negative 18. So if I put in negative 6 and positive 3, I know my middle is actually going to end up to be negative 3. I need a positive 3. So I'm just going to change my signs to be positive 6 and negative 3. And that would be factored. OK, so here we have a k squared that we can take out. The unique 5k squared plus 8k minus 4. If I multiply my a and c, I get negative 20. So I'm going to do negative 2 and positive 10. 
to split this middle with. So the k squared is just going to come down here with my answer. I'm going to split the middle here. Minus 2k plus 10k minus 4. Group. I'm going to get k. 5k minus 2 plus 2. 5k minus 2. So 5k minus 2 is the common term, and k minus k plus 2. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. If you look at this, you have k equals 0, but this is going to be a double root. This will give me k equals 2 fifths, and this will give me k equals negative 2. If I look at this on a graph, this is how much I can tell without even putting in my calculator. I know from the original function that it's a positive leading coefficient and it's an even. So it, they will both ends, both end behaviors will be going to infinity. So I know I will come down through negative 2. I will have a double root at 0. And I will come back up through 2 fifths. Okay, this is a double root right here, which means it's just touching zero and coming back down. So I know a lot about what this graph looks like without even putting it in my calculator. Okay, and the next example, I'm going to take out an 8, which will give me 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. And I think you guys can go ahead and graph, uh, factor that yourself. Coming forward, seeing four terms is not going to be an unusual thing, so I look for a GCF and there isn't one, so now I'm just going to group. I'm going to take out a 4a squared. That leaves me 5a plus 1. I'm going to take out a 5, nope, a 9. And I'm going to take out a 5a plus 1. So this ends up factoring as 5a plus 1, 4a squared minus 9. But you'll notice that this is the difference of squares, so I'm going to factor it even further. And this gives me 2a minus 3, 2a plus 3. So if I were to solve this, I would have a solution at negative 1 fifth, at positive 3 halves, and at negative 3 halves. And you'll start realizing that whatever degree this is, is the number of solutions I should get, real or imaginary. And you can see I have three real solutions here, so I can get a really good idea of the picture. I also know that my y-intercept is negative 9. So you can do a lot to graph this if you can imagine the graph. You'd have a y-intercept at negative 9. You have a positive odd, so it's going to end down here and up here. I'm going to go through um, negative one-fifth, negative three-halves, and positive three over two. So it's going to look something like this with the appropriate x-intercepts. Okay, we're now on to solving. So the first thing I'm going to do here is subtract the 8x squared to this side, set it equal to 0, always. Take out an x squared, and I notice I'm left with difference of squares. So remember that um, a here is x, and b here is 2. x times x times x gives me x cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 gives me 8. So factoring this would be x squared. And then I would do a minus b, a squared, plus ab, plus b squared. And since I'm solving this, I have a double root at x equals 0. I have a root at x equals 2. And as I told you before, this will never factor. This is not um, a perfect squared trinomial even though the first term is a perfect square and the last term is a perfect square. Um, so I would have to do this by quadratic formula. If you put it in quadratic formula, that's what you'll end with. So now I'm going to simplify. 12 is 2 root 3 and the i. 
I know that 2 can go into all three terms, so I can actually change this to negative 1 plus or minus i root 3 over 1. So this is five solutions, okay? So this is a, a polynomial to degree 5. I have 2 here, double root. I have 1 here, and I have 2 here. There are my five solutions. So in this example, I'm going to factor out a 4x, which would leave me x to the fourth minus 10x squared minus 9. Okay? This inside will factor as x squared minus 9. Hmm. Oops, this is a plus, there we go. And x squared minus 1 equals 0. You'll notice that, that is the, this is the difference of squares. So is this. I'm looking for five solutions. This solution, 4x equals 0, divide by 4. This is going to be x equals negative 3, x equals 3, x equals negative 1, x equals 1. Um, okay, so you again can get a general idea of what this looks like. I'm going to have five solutions. It's a positive odd, so it's going to end down to the left and up to the right. So I'm going to go through negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. That's kind of cool graph. Now, what we don't know is how high will this hump be, this hump be, this hump be, this hump be, but we have an idea of what our graph will look like. So this one I'm going to let you pause and go ahead and work it out, so see if you can get the same answer as me. And there would be your answer. So if I want to know the volume of the basin, it's going to be length times width times height. Don't remember. Don't forget, this side right here would be 2x minus 1. This side would, sorry, minus 2. This side right here would be x minus 2. And the depth of this would be x minus 1. Okay, don't forget that on all of the sides on the top, I'm subtracting off two sides, but on the bottom I'm only subtracting off one here. I go all the way to the height. So then I just plug it in and foil it out. And that would be your answer. Okay, and I hope this worked, because I'd really like you to see some of Inside Cameron Stadium with the Cameron Crazies, who the Cab Crazies are named after. Um, hope you enjoy. These are two video clips, so I think you click on them and they'll play. Alright, you guys have a great weekend.